What's up guys, David Land here coming to you from F1 2017. Of course, uh, we're not driving a 2017 car. In fact, we are driving a 1996 Williams. Uh, this is part of the new classic car content. We're going to do a five lap here race here, five lap here race, a five lap race here at the Hungaro Ring. Uh, and then I'm going to do another five lap race in this video with the modern cars. But since uh, everybody's kind of excited about the classics, I figured we're going to start off with this. Uh, we've got some pretty OP cars in this race, not gonna lie. Uh, the 1998 McLarens are like two or three miles, or uh, two or three seconds up the road from the rest of the field. But we're gonna see what we can do here, racing at the Hungarum ring. Let's do it. All right, so here we are on the grid. V10 engine in this car. And we're underway. I did not get a very good start, naturally. And the car just ahead is the car I was originally planning to do this video with, the V12 Ferrari, but it was way too hard to drive. It was way above my talent level. So I just decided to say, screw that. I also just got a warning for collision, or a collision. Not sure who I hit. It was somebody. There's not real drivers in the classic cars. So it's you kind of don't really know who to call out. Even though we've got Marty Roth and Roberto Moreno up there, and Rob Kaufman. So we've got some names that look like people who used to race in various series. Oh, we tried to get under Kaufman in the 95 Ferrari. Whoa. Couldn't quite do it, and the, actually the back end stepped out into the chicane. Cloudy, overcast day. I wonder if it's going to rain at some point during this five-lap event. That's a strong start. I think we've actually got one of the 98 McLarens up there. If I could get up into this pack, I think we might be able to have a shot at overtaking him. A lot of people don't like the Hungaro ring. I actually quite like this circuit. And it's a circuit that's pretty much unchanged from 1996 when this Williams would have been driving around. Of course, this is the car that took Damon Hill to the championship. Uh, Jacques Villeneuve was his teammate coming over from IndyCar Racing, having won a championship there and the Indy 500. And we're just trying to catch Kaufman here in the 95 Ferrari. And then Roth is in another 95 Ferrari and there's some slowdown because one of the 98 McLarens had some issues. That looked like a blown tire. Hard to tell from here, but it certainly looked like the rear tire on that uh, McLaren. I think I may have said Ferrari, but on that 98 McLaren was certainly down. So we move up right up into points contention. I just realized I probably could be using the rich fuel mixture. I think I'm going to do it on the last lap here the last couple of laps. Got a car behind us. Don't know who it is. Oh good, it's Moreno in the 98 McLaren. So we're really gonna have to fight here to keep him behind us, because that car is OPF. And yes, I just spoke like kids these days, unfortunately. I've got all the assists off, manual gears, Actually using an Xbox controller because I don't have uh, my wheel yet. That's coming. I will say this game really does work quite well on a wheel. There's no... Uh, I find no issues. It's not like Project Cars where you have to change 100 settings. And there goes Moreno working around. And we got another car, 92 Williams coming to the outside. Kind of boxing me a little bit. That's the car with the active suspension that got banned. I haven't actually driven that car yet. I've driven quite a few of the classics. The 06 Renault, the uh, 2010 Red Bull, uh, the 2004 Ferrari, 
and then I drove the 91 McLaren at Monaco, and that was an incredible experience. Just FYI. I'm going to have to do a video on that at some point, because that's just amazing. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I haven't bought an F1 game since 2012. I have to say they've really improved the franchise. I'm actually kind of... I'm actually, you shouldn't say kind of, I'm planning to do a career mode video because it looks so good with uh, all the various features and the kind of racing you can have. It's just fantastic. I did have a vote on Twitter and Haas won for the uh, team that I should be. So um, if you've got a different opinion, uh, be sure to vote in the comments what team I should use. But right now it's looking like I'm going to use Haas. McLaren was second, just FYI. As we've got Barnes and Murray, both in the 92 Williams and both going around me. But Barnes locked the brakes up, and that slowed Murray down and slowed me down and slowed every car behind me down because I think we've got a bit of a train running here. He has Roth in the Ferrari. Oh, that was a bit optimistic into that corner. You can carry a lot of speed through this right-hander, and now we've got Roth running into me. He's side-by-side side with me, and Roth is actually going to outbreak me. Oh, that's going to be a corner cut. Oh, Roth still hitting me. I give him the finger, or at least the equivalent in this game of the finger. Well, that's just sprung the 92 Williams. We're never going to see them again, and we've been hit. Oh, dear. Well, there's the contact with Roth coming out of the chicane, and then into another chicane here, side by side, and then I had a bad line go way out wide and then run into my teammate of all people. Oh, and how embarrassing is this? There's my helmet design, by the way. I might end up changing it. It's a bit boring. Might add some more blue, but there, the photographers get a good shot of me in my embarrassment as, uh, we go out of the Hungarian Grand Prix, Here come our winning drivers there. and uh, there's the winners. The end of a thrilling Grand Prix. Probably the all in that OP 98 McLaren. Yep, there's two of them in. at least on the podium. Yeah, good for today. you, you cheater. You cheater. Yeah, you spray that champagne. Well, at least we got an American on the podium. Good for you, sir. Representing the Stars and Stripes. So yeah, it was three of the completely OP 98 McLarens on the podium. No surprise. Look how much faster. Three seconds up on the 92 Williams. Uh, and then we get to the 96 Williams. Uh, old Sophie, which uh, I ran into the back of. Uh, and then we've got all the way down to the end of the field. Me, uh, and with the uh, one of the 98 McLarens with uh, Moreno was the one who I guess had the tire problem. He still managed to not come last because one of the 88 McLarens must have also been involved in that crash. So let's move on to the modern cars because they're a little bit easier to drive than these big, wide, powerful, uh, you know, non-six cylinder engine cars. So we're here on the grid at the Silverstone circuit. We're going to run a five lap race and the car we're doing it in. It ain't a Red Bull, but it's got Red Bull logos all over it. It's a Toro Rosso. Uh, in the hands of uh, Daniel Kafiet because I figured the way the last race in this video ended, uh, Kafiet is probably my best option, even though Signs crashes probably just as much as Kafiet does. Low key. Also, low key, this is probably the best looking car on the grid, both design wise and livery wise. Uh, so let's hope to give uh, the good old. Uh, Toro Russo, a bit of a good run here at Silverstone. Probably won't compete for the win, uh, but I'm familiar with the track. And, you know, again, the 2017 cars are pretty, I don't want to say easy to drive, but they're pretty good to drive. So uh, let's get started and let's see how far up the grid we can get in five laps. The revs come up, the lights come up. We're ready to go. And we are racing at Silverstone. Didn't get a decent start, but uh, we haven't lost any positions. Going to be real careful getting into turn one here. Don't want any contact or penalties, which we did. No, we got a, we got a warning. 
contact with Magnuson. Not sure how we did that, but we did it. And now making contact with Perez. And Massa just ahead, but we did get around Verstappen. So around both our teammate and one of the factory Red Bull cars. We're going to stick the fuel mix up into rich mix because we've got some Mercedes-powered cars up here, and those things are bad, fast, and straight line. Of course, uh, the Toro Rosso team, like the factory team, is powered by Renault engines. Okay, Renault power units, forgive me, the non-PC uh, thing to say about <laughs> engines these days. Uh, but... Uh, Yes, uh, the difference, of course, is that the, uh, the Toro Rosso team does not call their Renault engines Tag Heuers, which that uh, Verstappen car does call its engine a, uh, a Tag Heuer. Oh, Formula One never change. As we didn't get particularly good or well through Maggots Beckett's, Verstappen looking like he's going to try to pass me, but of course, again, we have the same theoretical power from our units so no real advantage for for Stappen on the straightaway he's gonna have to make it up in the corners as we definitely didn't quite get through the uh, chicane heading on to the main straight as well as I would have liked and here comes for Stappen he looked didn't quite get there of course the weird thing about the hairpins in this game our third gear in the 2017 F1 cars, so as we, I accidentally shifted into second and you saw what the result was. All of the wheel spin. And it allowed Verstappen to get through. Signs and Grosjean having a great fight there for 11th. But I'd quite like to be around Verstappen again. Not just because he has a bunch of fangirls and it would be a nice uh, change of pace. Also because I'm driving his uh, Kvyat and uh, Kvyat of course got replaced by Verstappen, but Verstappen is gone, and now it's going to be holding off the American dream, Grosjean there, wow, we really had to defend there from Grosjean going down the old pit straight and into the old turn one, now back to Maggots Beckett's, hopefully we can get through here quite decently, and try to make up some time on Verstappen, not quite working out the way I'd like to. If I could just stay in DRS range, we just set purple sectors in sector two. So clearly we got through there very fast. I guess if you're gonna go purple, whoa, as we're way out wide. Surprised I didn't get a track limits. Uh, warning for that one. Bad, bad. There we go, Tur DRS is going, and it looks like Grosjean is not going to need it. He's going to dive to the inside, contact, and he spun. I guess since my driver made the hand motion, we're going to stay green. I guess I kind of chopped Grosjean, but he kind of stuck his nose in there where he probably shouldn't have been. And now I got way out wide, and now Signs is all over the back of me. This is a DRS zone, but I guess he didn't pick up the DRS because he's not using it. But Ocon is, and Ocon trying to go around the outside. He tried to cowboy around there. That did not work. Boy, the mirrors are, are filling up quickly with a lot of Formula One machinery as we really drive signs into the grass there. That was a bit dirty, I have to admit. And now Ocon making the move down to the inside of signs. Hopefully, oh, they took each other out. They took each other out. Oh, man. Signs did the same thing I did to Grosjean earlier in the lap to Ocon. And I love those rhyming names because it definitely makes it much easier to say it. And that definitely was a big wreck because it looks like a lot of guys got taken out in that one. So we get, whoa, that's way too wide. I, again, I can't believe I didn't get a track cutting warning for that one, but. That's the second time we've done that. But I guess the race directors are paying attention to the massive pileup that just took place. And now Signs is taking a look. It's going to be a battle with Carlos Signs. And who is going to pull it off here? We get down into the hairpin. Probably could have used another second gear there. We'll see. Signs is going to have the DRS, and here he comes. 
Uh, look into the inside. Didn't quite have the run. Oh, and I definitely slowed down way, way too much. Signs was looking. He's still there because of the indicator showing the red. Now we're clear. Signs still just pounding me. If we can get through the old turn one, though, more or less flat out, which we did. We put a little bit of distance on signs. Now into Maggots Beckett's. Flat, well, I lifted just a little bit because I'm a wanker. And we get through onto the back straightaway, but again, another DRS zone. Gonna allow signs to take a look here. He's going to the outside. That's a low percentage move. And there we go again. I guess we're just allowed to use that. I'm not going to complain about it, but I'm a bit questioning of the enforcement of the rules. I guess when it works in my favor, I don't mind. So up to Rich Mix. Here we go. We got to hold off Carlos Signs for one more lap. Flat out into turn one. Not easy flat. That that definitely the car was definitely on the edge of grip. But it is flat out, and we get right down in the second part of that hairpin. Car feeling like the tires are wearing just a little bit. Super softs. We don't have the option to use ultra softs at the uh, Silverstone race for whatever reason. Though I do really like the purple tires. They look quite nice, especially on blue cars for whatever reason. Oh boy, howdy. That was close. All right, third gear. Signs is to the inside. A little bit of contact. Oh, he pushed me out wide. Here comes Signs. He's going to make the move down to the inside. Oh, we got turned. Yellow flags are out. Oh, signs, you dirty driver. Actually, I blocked him, so honestly, it was my fault. All right, let's see if we can chase down signs here. We've just taken the Toro Rossos out of the points, which um, I'm sure the uh, the team boss is going to be real, real pleased with that. But we might actually pick up some DRS for the last lap. Yeah, we do. Here comes the DRS. It is open. You can see it in the mirrors, but I will turn it around just so you can see it. Valtteri Botas won the race. I think I know somebody who's going to be excited about that. As we get way out wide once again, but I guess we can use that. Right down next to the line. And oh, big, big slide. And we finished. That's all that really matters. And I definitely thought I was going to wreck with signs, but uh, 13th, that's a lucky place to finish, that's for sure. Oh dear. Well, there you go. Valtteri Bottas won the race over Sebastian Vettel. Lewis Hamilton was in third, and we go down through the rest of the field. You can take a look at where your favorite driver may have finished. Uh, obviously, Esteban Ocon uh, had a crash, and Fernando Alonso had a penalty. Not sure what he had a penalty for, but he did, so that will take him, uh, actually took him probably behind Stoffel Van Dorn, his teammate. Oh dear, his uh, season just keeps getting worse. So thank you guys so much for watching F1 2017. Hoping to do a career mode on this, so if you'd like to see that, hit the like button. Also leave a comment down below on which team you think I should use. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. We'll see you, hopefully, in Australia.